Hi everyone. Welcome to another dynamic programming question. So this question is uh, named as sentence screen fitting. So let's try to understand the question first. So here we are given a screen which is specified as a row by columns. So this is a rectangular screen. It could be a square sometimes. And we have a sentence. This is a non-empty list of words. So these are list of words, which is a sentence. And we have to find out how many times the sentence can be fitted on the screen. So we have to write the sentence on the screen and we have to return how many times the sentence could be written. Here, there are some conditions of the questions, which I'm going to explain you. This is a very important solve. First is that a word cannot be broken while we are changing the lines. Second, there has to have at least one exact one space between two words could be more so let's say we have a screen two cross eight screen two rows and eight columns so hello word is the list of sentence is the list of words which are sentence and we want to write it so how many times we can write it so we know that there are eight spaces in each row so first row we write h e l l o hello and then one space which is mandatory to write and now we have consumed six space and so now two of them is left unused because we don't have the next word is five five letters long word which we cannot write in this two string so basically we just keep it empty and now we go to the next row and we try to write our next word word w o r l d and this is for five spaces and the next last next three are left at this because we cannot use the the last two spaces given that the next word which has to be written is hello so we cannot change the order of word and we have to have one space between two words so these are two condition third is that we cannot break a word from going to one sentence to another sentence another example is e b c d and e the three words we will see this how to solve this later so let, let's see how, how we can solve it so the idea is when we start writing, we write the first word, then after each word, we have to append a space. And then we write the next word if we have enough space. If we don't have enough space, like example one, we go to the second row, and so on. So in every row at the end, we will have either one space or more than one space, which are unused. Basically. So here we write BCD, and after that, only one space left, which is needed. And in the next row, we have we write E, then our space, then E, then another space. And we have two more spaces, but after A, we have BCD, and we cannot write BCD here in two spaces because one space is mandatory. So we go to the third row and write BCD, and then we put one more space which is mandatory, and then we put E, and then another space which is also mandatory. So we might just skip it. So we have three by six screen where we were able to write the whole sentence two times. So output is two here. One thing is very important here is we since there has to have a space between two words and we will write the same sentence one after the other we add one more space to the sentence so the first operation here is this is a python code so class solution and this word typing which is a function name and then we have three variable sentence which is a list of strings or words rows and columns which are two integers showing the was on columns to the screen. And we have to return the int so that is the number of times we were able to write the sentence in on the, sc the screen. So we make a new string, yes, and this is obtained by joining the sentence by putting a space between invisible words, and we add another space at the end. So this is what we are trying to achieve here. Okay, after this, the important thing is that we need to, to be able to track the spacing between two words so we define a matrix backtrack and if you want to write shorter we can write just a b b capital b a new matrix which is backtrack so as the name suggests we use it for backtracking so what this the this backtrack array has the same length as the string which is obtained by joining the words in the list of words so here let's say we are writing the backtrack corresponding to hello world so we will be starting from zero one two three four so 
these zero to four are the index for the words hello. Then we have a space is represented minus one. And then we have another word which is W O R L D five letter word. So again we have zero, one, two, three, four. And then since we are adding another space at the end, we have minus one again. So this backtrack array we have a non integers where minus one represents the space and zero to whatever number represents the count of or index of the character in the string. And we will use it for writing. We will see how useful it is. So let's see. So we have a pre. Pre is a initialization of the position of the space. So we initialize it to minus one. So initially we say that we have the space at the end, which is true. And then we will update it later as well. And now we iterate for i in range L. We iterate for the string. So we go through the string. And if we encountered a space, we make the pre point to that index. So pre always stores at every iteration of the string, which has the length L. Pre is pointing to the most recent space. So in the beginning, we have minus one, we initialize it. Later, when we start searching, let's say we are looking at hello world, we start searching. So when I is zero for H, for for E is one, then L is two, another one is three, O is four, so from zero to four, the pre value will be minus one. From zero to four, zero minus one. So we define backtrack like this. So it's i minus pre plus one. So from zero to four, for i is equals to zero to four, pre is minus one. So we have pre plus one is equals to zero. So backtrack is same as i. So here again, backtrack is same as i. You see zero, one, two, three, four, which is the index of the letters in hello world. Okay. And uh, when we uh, and this is the way we define. So let's say what will happen after this hello world. So at at this position, i is equals to five, and our if condition to check the string value is equal to uh, to be a space satisfies, and now pre becomes five, and now the bracket track will be i, which is five minus five plus one. So it's called five minus six because minus one. So that is how we have minus one for spaces that we wanted to have. And next it will continue. So when I increases further, the pre will remain constant at the value five. So pre plus one is six. So when we have the next, the next word W, this W index is six and we have six minus pre plus one is another six. So we have six minus six backtrack is zero and so on is the index of the words in W O R L D increase. We have zero, one, two, three, four. And again, after the D, we have the this last one. And here the index I is equals to 11 because the whole length is 12, 11. And three where it's again an empty uh, space. So three becomes 11 and we have I minus three. So Pre is equals to i, so we have 11 minus 11 plus 1, 12, so minus 1. So we again have minus 1 here. So we store this backtrack. So this backtrack is essentially representing either the index of characters in the string, if there is, and if there is an empty string, uh, empty space, there is minus 1. So this will help in lookup later. So now we have to find the number of times we can write our sentence, the whole sentence of length 12 which is the new length after adding extra space after the string into our our screen. So here we will have POS. POS is the position of writing. So we are writing now. So we start with POS equal to zero, and now we trade two rows. So for R in rows, for each row, so let's say for, we have uh, here rows two, two rows, two cross eight screens, so it's a two, two rows. So for the first row, we have POS. POS equals to POS plus calls. So we have column eight columns. So we have POS value updated to eight here. After this, we go to the back track and we see, we divide, uh, we take the modulus of POS position with respect to length of string. So length was 12 and POS is eight. So eight modulus 12. So when we divide eight by 12, what is the remainder? This is what the remainder operator is doing. So eight divided by 12 gives remainder eight. So we have to look at the, index eight of the backtrack. So we know four is fifth, then sixth, seventh, 
8. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 8 is 2. 2. So backtrack value at index 8 is 2. So we divide, we subtract PO, 2 from POL. So POL is 8 minus 2. So here we have 8 minus 2 becomes 6. And next we have, uh, so this was for the first row the second row again because is increased by number of columns which is eight so we again see the six plus number of columns is eight becomes 14. so pos new value is 14 of at the, this line in the second row and now again we look at the 14 divided by 12 which is two so we go and look at the index two in the backtrack which is number two and we subtract POS equals to old POS 14 minus 2, which is 12. So we subtract to the second line, so which is basically 14 minus 2, and we get 12. So now we POS is the position, and we have a uh, 12 plus 1, which is 13. POS is 12 plus 1, which is 13, and we divide it by. Uh, so basically, we have we have added uh, additional space uh, here so we got 12 and 12 plus 1 divided by 12 becomes uh, so this is the last line so we have the after iterating through all the rows we have the rows value position 12 so basically it means we were able to write 12 literal involved uh, which are the either the characters in the words or the sent or the spaces between these words and that is pos and we divided with the length of the string to see how many times we have we were able to write so here just we are counting the pos is counting the number of characters or number of to written plus number of spaces between two individual words which we were able to write and this total number when divided by the length of the string which is hello word plus one space we get the number of times we were able to write the sentence to make this concept further clear, let's see another example which is uh, again reproduced here. Let's see in the, this, this area. So we have a three cross six screen where we have three rows, six columns, and we have the sentence A, B, C, D, and E, there are three words. So we form the string yes by combining these words, and we put one space between the words and one space at the end. So here the hyphen is showing the space, so A, space b c d space e again space so now length is one two three four five six seven eight so length is each year so we'll always divide or take the modulus with eight so now the backtrack or b matrix here we are writing so it's a zero because it's a word word and then we have a space minus one then again we have word of length three so we can write zero one two and again we have a space which is minus one and we have E, which is length one, so it's zero and then minus one. So you can directly write backtrack and for, we computed it and the same backtrack is given by this formula where we update the pre to be the location of the last observed, observed space and we obtained a backtrack is equal to current index minus current space plus one, okay? So you will get the same, you can verify it by going through the loop like we have done. So the idea of the first loop, which it trades for the length L, so here it will trade to length H, is to define the backtrack for each backtrack for each, uh, to define the backtrack basically. And uh, this is what, we obtain. Uh, it's important to learn here is that we should put uh, backtrack. I forgot to put the backtrack index here. Uh, there should be backtrack index i is given by i minus p plus one. I'm sorry for this. It should uh, backtrack here is a, a vector and it should have i index here. So ith index of backtrack is given by i minus p plus one. I'm sorry for this. You will get the complete program at the end of this video and you can pause and see uh, it just in case you want to type it in uh, IDE and verify it. So let's, so there are three rows, it means we will define the backtrack. So we have to define the backtrack. After this, we will iterate through all the rows and we will try to update the POS two times for each iteration. So here for first row, we will define POS two times, as I said. 
So PS is initialized zero because this is a position for where of the word which is to be written. So we have zero plus six. Six is the column size, it's total six. Now PO is given by six minus backtrack value six divided by eight. So eight is the length of string and modulus six. So sixth space we will see one, two, three, four, five, six. So the sixth one is the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is zero. So we have six minus zero is equals to six. Now we will go to the next row. Iterate it again, so it will be POS because to POS will be increased by number of columns, which is six, and we get twelve here. And again, the POS equals to POS minus backtrack. So we are just iterating these two lines, twelve minus. We can combine these two, but it's, it's nice to write it this way, easier to understand and interpret. So we have twelve minus B, twelve modulus eight. So it's a B of four basically. So zero, one, two, three. 4 which is 2 value so we have 12 minus 2 which is 10 and now the second row is gone now we have third and the final row so pos equals to the past value which is 10 plus number of columns 16 and now we will update the pos equals to current pos this formula again 16 minus b of 16 divided by 8 now 16 divided by 8 is 0 0 to index is 0 16 minus 0 is equals to 16 and now we will return QAS plus 1 divided by modulus of L or divided by 8. So 16 plus 1 divided by 8, it ensures that we always return an uh, integer value here, the double divide sign. So 16 plus 1 divided by 8 is, gives us 2. And we know that we already have seen here that we can write it two times. So 2 is the correct answer. Let's try to do it again. So we have to write A, B, C, D, and E. So we write A, then the space and B, C, D, and now we have five and another space six. So first row is gone. The next row we start with E, another space, and then E, and then another space. So these four are mandatory, but now we have just two spaces left, and the next row is B, C, D, which has length three. So we cannot write in row two. We have to go to the row three and write B, C, D, which takes three spaces, then another space, so four. And now we have two left, so we have E, and then other space. So thus we were able to write it two times. Well, I was able to submit it. So as you can see, this is a lead code question, sentence uh, screen fitting, 418. You can just Google the name of the problem. It will come up. And uh, as you see, these are the, you can pause the screen to read the question. And after that, they have example. It's the same example which I discussed, just so that you can relate with it. And uh, the best way to understand this is to play with some more examples and we'll go through this uh, code manually. And uh, now let me show you my code here. I had made a mistake in my written notes that I don't have a index for the backtrack, which is the here this line 22. So we have to have backtrack, ith value of backtrack is given by i minus p plus one and I don't have it. So you can easily spot this, this was a mistake, uh, more like a mistake in writing. Uh, it's important to know that this if is only to, if loop is only to make sure that the pre stores the last space index and backtrack this line is depending on only this for loop and it always runs. And I have written some comments also here which you can go through to further understand it if you have any further questions. I will be happy to answer some of the questions if you have regarding, or maybe make another follow-up video to further analyze this problem if you find this solution useful. So uh, you can just pause it here and take care uh, until we meet again. Bye.